Sala, welcome back to Face. How are you, my trading warrior brother? Hi, hi guys. Hi, Dale. How are you? Hi. Oh, Good, hi. Sal. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, great to have you Thanks back. Thanks for the and, invitation, guys. Yeah, and uh, you know, a great time to look at the Bumudi bands, your own bands, and uh, you're going to start off with the uh, S and P's. Okay, so um, uh, for those of you who don't know Sala, uh, here you go. This is where you know you could find him on Twitter, and uh, he is really um, well known in the industry and has uh, uh, mentored people and he's, you know, trader for IG in Germany and you're in Germany. Is that correct, Sala? Right. I'm in Germany, but I'm covering also the Dutch, the Swiss and the Austrian market. So okay. the, the central Europe. Okay. Thing, but I'm located in Germany. Yeah. So you, yeah, I see your coverage, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, London, and, uh, there's a couple of links, and you could find Sala at Sala Bumidi. That's B O U H M I D I. So, Sala, let's see. You know, everyone's talking about uh, the potential of some type of top here in S and P's. I know a lot of people are still looking for the big round number of four thousand to be taken out. Is that what your stuff is saying here? The upper boom, uh, band is up there, isn't it? Uh, all right, this is the 15-minute charts, but I just want to sum up what the guys before me told, which is also correct. We have a, even the lower Bumidi band shows us right now that we really, 3,130, something like this is the lower Bumidi band of, from yesterday, oh, okay. which seems to be a support at least on a short-term basis. But what I want to make clear from a seasonal view nobody not everybody is a friend of seasonal patterns but uh, we have some seasonal patterns that are really important and need to be uh, talked about so it, on equity markets we are technically in a nice up trend everybody yes. talked before that and there's no doubt of it so people asking of course many times when does a upcoming correction come i think april is from seasonal perspective the best month for S&P 500 since 1950 and for the Dow Jones as well. We have an average return in the Dow Jones of almost 2%. We are still in a bullish mood and in a bullish trend. So what I expect is that, especially now, we, we are two days before Good Friday, yeah. Oh, three, yeah. Uh, and this pre-Easter session is typically also bullish on the markets that we have seen now on the DAX as well. And yesterday in the Dow Jones started really pretty well in, in the US markets as well. So that I think that April still can help the bulls to continue the trend. I and know there is- And then May go away this year, Salah? Yeah, this could be possible. I'm not a friend of sell in May and go away, actually, to be honest, even if I like Why? to. Why? Uh, because it may hurt your feelings and told you to go exactly, away? Huh? Exactly. Okay. And I'm maybe maybe too emotional in that time, but no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's a kind of, I, I mean, to underline it, I like to deep dive in seasonal patterns and seasonal trading statistics, combining them, of course, with technical analysis, but sell and may go away. This is a media overblown seasonal pattern that you need to be careful with. So time changed and seasonal patterns also changed. So you can't directly say it's definitely May, but in this year, also 2020, we have seasonal patterns are coming back. And this is what I see right now. And I, think that this trend will continue at least april will i will not def fight against april this time and one seasonal pattern that i discussed with a lot of people that are asking me hey look on the reality Co covid pand pandemic is still lasting we don't know what the reality will affect how the reality will impact uh, how corona sorry will impact on the re reality at all but the markets are going up of course there are factors like ex yeah monetary policy uh, mm -hmm. and etc that is driving the market but if you are really waiting on a correction take for example a really interesting seasonal pattern that is known in the market which is called the down 
Mon down Friday, down Monday effect. And I want to show you something okay. right quick. Going back to the Corona crisis, the outbreak of Corona crisis on the markets. Right. right. So in, in February and February, March. And you can see we had in this outbreak, it was that it was precisely a down Friday and the following down Monday. And then before we peaked higher, yeah, we made a new high. And then the, fr the upcoming Friday and the upcoming Monday have been bearish. Okay. And this was a warning signal kind of saying, hey, guys, take care. There can be a huge correction. Vice versa, the, 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 the bottom that we made here was yeah, even was also strong Fridays and follow through Monday. Exactly. And this is, you know, let me ask you something because you brought it up because, you know, uh, you know, uh, one of our, one of our, uh, you know, good friends here who's been with us for a long time. He makes up cartoons to announce face. And, you know, <laughs> I've been talking about turnaround Tuesday for a long time. It's pretty much uh, in the same pattern, only it's saying, you know, the way you close Friday, you usually get follow through on Monday, maybe into Tuesday's opening. Um, so is it that kind of similar to what you're saying is, uh, on whatever way you go on Friday, normally you get follow through early in the week before there's going to be a change in direction, right? This similar is something, to... yeah, this is something what I observed, especially in the U S and, uh, in the U S equity markets and in the European equity markets, because okay. of the correlation, and this is definitely something what I try to use as a, as a conditional trader. I know it's really difficult right now, especially for beginners saying like, look on the reality, look on the markets. There is a huge divergence between what is happening in real life and what is happening on the market. So, but you need to be careful just writing only your opinion because opinion on the market is or the trading only opinions or especially your own subjective opinion could be really dangerous in a environment like we have right now. Use technical analysis. And this is something what we can see also in short term, 21 EMA and the 55 EMA, two EMAs that I use, uh, Fibonacci numbers, actually, they shown us great support in this up movement. And yeah. so this is something why, what I, what I wanted to summarize at least for equity markets. I'm somebody who still says this continuation, trend continuation can be uh, extended in April. And we had questions, is there a 4,100 possible? Yes, if we break the upper Bumidi band by around 4,010, I think this could be definitely a signal that we are trying to get higher and uh, continue the trend. I talked with you about the RSE um, that I use on 34 um, yeah, periods. And I have my border, which is the 48.5, yeah, actually frontier. And if we broke above this line, or the, the, this horizontal line, we are actually no. in a bullish environment. And you see that it's still, okay, it's on a 15 minute chart, but you can see that we are still bullish. And there's nothing against it. Of course, we are now on a resistance area here, right here. This is something what we need to break above to, to continue or really also on a short, short-term basis. Okay, so if we get above the upper Bermudi band, and that's what, around 4,000, that would project to what? That could project to exactly what we heard about. This is the 4,100 um, area like okay. we see here, which is definitely a huge new high that we could get. But okay. the higher we, 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 we step forward, if, if the acceleration process is too high, of course, the prob probability to get a correction is, of course, high. And we will okay. see a correction this year. But people who are thinking about we get a, higher, a bigger correction that we had in 2020, I doubt it. I doubt it in this year. I mean, we are still in a post-election year. This is some, something seasonal driving as well. And um, 
What are seasonally the negative months? Is it October, September, October? It's uh, August. August. It's okay. uh, June. Is really bad, but uh, October you and uh, we have a year end rally. So in October it's actually good. November, yeah, October is a kind of quite slightly good mark um, month, but November is really good. It's so, funny because uh, uh, August may have been bad, but August was the launch point for this prolific bull market in 1982. Right. Just a little tree market trivia for you. Exactly. And this is, thank you, though, for that. So I, I always say seasonal patterns, you need to observe them, you need to analyze them, and you need to check them in decades. People and behavior is changing. We know maybe the mid-month effect, a really nice, important effect that I also checked on European Mid -month? markets. Mid-month, okay. the, the, the ninth, 10th, and 11th trading day are right. the most bullish ones. And this is something because it changed the time. 1980 was actually completely different. We had strong bullish days at the end of the month. And front runners, brokers, traders anticipated this movement and brought it more and more to the mid-month as a factor. I'm not a I'm I'm using seasonal patterns. I trade with them, but I'm not a person who's almost seeking for the reason why we have the seasonal pattern. Because I'm okay. a trader. I like okay. to 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 find some interesting uh, factors because people ask, but at at the end, the money counts or the profitabil for profitability of my trading ideas. So uh, do you come up uh, with your own studies that give you these seasonal indicators, Sala? Or, you know, I, I remember one of the first guys that made seasonal trading pretty um, popular was uh, Jake Bernstein. Um, so I'm taking you back uh, about four decades, uh, three, four decades. Uh, uh, were you Great influenced guy. by him? Influenced Definitely. by him? Definitely, okay. definitely. Uh, there have been uh, also Hirsch. There have been nice, nice, great people that I learned from. Uh, okay. And I took them as an idol for that uh, nice, interesting uh, analysis. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, you know, you found somebody uh, and you kind of modeled some of your stuff after a guy who, you know, uh, why reinvent the wheel? when the wheel is uh, already turning the car in different directions, right? So Ab absolutely, absolutely. You, and you know, uh, and, and uh, but I'll let you go, but I, uh, you know, but I just want to say before I forget that, you know, people, uh, you know, I'm pretty well known for my uh, work for three drive formations or, you know, complete the reversal inflection point stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't invent it. Uh, you know, uh, what did uh, Solomon say? There's nothing new under the sun. And I learned this. I learned this in the '70s from J.R. Hill. So um, that's what people have to do: is find a style that suits their personality. I was always looking for, you know, turning points, and then found this uh, you know, J.R. Hill's work. And uh, you found seasonal stuff. So you know what? Now it's our turn, isn't it, Sala? To you know, pass on what we've learned from market masters. Uh, uh, that we have, you know, maybe become efficient at using and pass it on to the next generation of traders. Absolutely. This is how trading works, communication, and of course, helping giving something back, because this is something what you definitely underlined, and I, I totally agree with you, and something what we always need to be have in mind. We don't need to uh, invent the wheel again, but... The world is changing. Seasonal patterns are also now interesting in cryptocurrencies. And Mr. Bernstein, he was not in a time where cryptocurrencies have been already there. So there are also new upcoming things that you can then discover with these tools that you have learned from oh, yeah. masters and, and changed them, of course, maybe to a new market that they didn't have the chance because of the time... Uh, in the past, we didn't have cryptocurrency, so this is just a natural thing. Yeah, I mean, there's. You're right. There's this. Uh, what is it? August is Ghost Month in Asia, where they tend not to make um, any investments. Correct. 
Correct. And so it's a period of weakness for crypto since there's the big players in in that space. And so, you know, that it's interesting. And I didn't find this out on my own. You don't know how much I learn and hoping our community does by talking to traders and uh, talking to you every day. It's intelligence gathering in here for these interviews. And yeah, you're right. It's, it's amazing. There were some people that were already alert to, you know, looking for highs going into ghost month. You know, I thought it was, you know, um, kind of funny at first, I was <laughs> gonna, you know, put on a Halloween costume for the month, but uh, it it's really true. Uh, you know, this is kind of like what the old tape readers used to know. Or, Absolutely. you know, right, buy on Rosh Hashanah and sell on Young Kipper, all of these uh, <laughs> type of, uh, you know, seasonal things that have to do with what people are doing. Because the market is people. Indeed, indeed. We are the, we are the markets, in, in yeah. other words. Yeah. So, Sala, um, yeah, the Bumundi bands uh, that you created, um, are they in any way like a derivation of the most famous bands? Well, you know, there's a few like Keltner and Bowley, but uh, what drove you to come up with your own, you know, your own proprietary band technical indicator instead of using what's on everyone else's mt4 yeah great i a great question if we look on indicators we know bollinger of course which is in history in volatility indicator we know keltner channel uh the rt air the average true range all mm. nice volatility indicators what i missed was that those indicators only used historical volatility so the volatility of the price, the fluctuation of the price from the history. So if we go okay. back and would calculate all the deviation from the mean of the price. You're going it's left. What, exactly. All right. But what I did is I used the implied volatility. Okay. So I used the VIX as the underlying, as a second variable to calculate a bandwidth by using implied volatility effects, okay. they, they create this bandwidth. And this big right. difference is that I try to use the option market, the changes on the option market of put and call ratios. This is including, of course, or impacting the volatility bands or the Bumidi bands. And uh, I created a lot of strategies because you can use them as a mean reversion. We can see it here last week. We started pretty well in the S&P 500. We tested the upper band and then we closed at the end A in the Bumidi bandwidth and B, the test was not successful and we broke back into the bandwidth. So days where we see a really hard break up or break down, these are days where the implied volatility is massively changing. So by other words, saying people on the option market are completely changing their strategy, their behavior, their, their hedging uh, purpose. So something is happening on the, on the option market. This is what, what it's telling me really easily described. So this is something what, what I use for trading the market by using using the Bumidi bands as invisible resistance and supports. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, what's been moving the market, uh, even though it's been going on for a while, but finally really began to accelerate were uh, yields um, supporting the dollar. Um, Correct. Uh, pressuring metals. uh it's all about yields. Uh, any view on where we are? I, I've been thinking for a few weeks or so that they would begin to relent a bit, but uh, looks like they might even be making a charge here for another, try and post another new high in, in yields for this wave. Any any view on interest rates here? Yeah, I think they probably they're going to, technically they're going to post a new, print a new high, and then we're going to see a correction back because I think this yield uh, topic is driven a bit too early and too euphoric. So 
I don't see any long-term view or yeah, f- actually for this year, I don't see any huge possibilities to, to see a higher yield increase that we have seen right now. So we are quite at the top for the first, I think, because okay. there is too much pressure on in different other factors that could stop uh, this movement. Okay. And uh, you feel the same way about the, uh, advance that we're having in the dollar so far, just uh, kind of temporary with yields, and it'll back off again uh, once yields begin to relent. Exactly, and we can see at night. We we already th- talked about it in this in this episode today about this uh, downward trend in in the euro, yeah. which is absolutely yeah. correct, especially and uh, comparable also to gold. I talked about it. Uh, end of, of 2020 already that we can that there's possible there's a huge possibility to to start a downtrend and this is absolutely that what happening in in euro dollar is trending uh, we have seen a bottom that we a significant bottom actually in the DXI before uh, at the beginning of the year and it yeah. started going better so I think dollar will get more in movement. So I think that this downtrend will continue in the euro and especially also in gold 1,600 is a really good line where we can see. You know, I I keep hearing people, I don't know, you know, you're there boots on the ground about an upcoming euro crisis that could be uh, the catalyst could be some uh, problem at an Italian bank uh, uh, starting in April. Uh, is there? Are you hearing anything about uh, some type of systemic risk coming out of uh, Italy, or political risk about leaving the euro uh, coming out of that part of Southern Europe? I mean, these are topics that are not in you, and they always fl- uh, flash up uh, if, okay. if something is happening in the market. I don't think that are, that they are too. Yeah, carefully. It's just a, we don't need to see them too carefully. I think, of course, these are topics that already always come. Yeah. The banking problem in, in Europe, especially in Southern Europe, is, is known. And yeah. this should be not a surprise. But I don't think that we see We've been massive. hearing about the death of the euro for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Right, right. Because, right. It's, because it's not a, a federal uh, union. It's a monetary union. Absolutely. Uh, Big difference. Okay. Yeah. So, um, any, uh, do you think that this, uh, you know, I'm thinking around 1600, 1550, uh, gold might be the time to start nibbling at that level? You have any Bumudi bands longer yeah. term? Like, a, uh, I, 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 and, I use the Bumudi bands also for gold. Okay. And I totally agree with you. I think it's loading up. There you go. But here we go. Yeah. But we can see right now we, we broke out of the Bumidi band yesterday. And this was yeah. definitely also a volatility trade because saying, right. hey, we, we are not coming back, guys. And the moving averages all draw to the downside. So there was not a mean reversion day right. in gold. Completely different. And it, start, it seems to accelerate the process. Down 1,600 is the next support level for me, even if we see here a short pivot points on 50 minutes okay all right so uh, uh i i really like your analysis sala and uh, enjoy having you uh someone's asking if that's public can they get that indicator from you in yeah, some way yes of course they can just use it on trading view um okay. it's public so everybody can use it just visit my twitter at Zalabumidi. it's pinned directly right. on my as a post so you can click on it and um, use it of course and send me feedback give me some opinion about it i'm totally free for that this is something what like dell said communication is the key let us discuss let us help us let us create ideas appreciate and- yeah appreciate your giving spirit sala and uh, thank you like coming you. here yeah, and coming here and uh, uh, sharing it with us and giving us some points to consider 
uh, in our trading plan. And uh, I want to thank you, my trading warrior brother, for uh, returning to face and hope I'll be able to talk you into doing it again a few months down the road. Thank you, bro. I'm always happy to be a guest with you guys. And I love it. Like okay. Park Analytics. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. That's Sala. That's the wrap up for Turnaround Tuesday. Join the team on the morning edge. And remember, whether you use bands, whether you use uh, resistance, uh, you can always have those, but it's most important to count your blessings every day. Impossible to be both grateful and depressed at the same time. So everyone could find something that they're grateful for. Uh, I'm grateful for being able to uh, help you accomplish what you want as a trader. I, I know our whole team feels that way. I could tell, I know Sala does. So um, thank you very much, everybody. Good hunting the rest of the day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Adios, and thanks again, Sala Bumudi. Thank you. Have a All nice right. one. Thank you, buddy. Okay.